This episode is brought to you by the Let's Code Physics Patreon supporters. Today I want to show you one of the most powerful features in vPython, and that is the vertex. Uh, let's give our vertex a name. It's our first vertex. We'll call it v1. So you just use the vertex function, and you really just need two things to make a vertex unique. You need a position. Let's start out with vector 110. So this will be located uh, one unit to the right and one unit up, and then in the xy plane. And we're going to give it a color. Color equals color dot red. I want to press control two to run. You're not going to see anything because the vertex doesn't create something visual. It just records this point with this color in space, but it is very powerful even though it doesn't in and of itself result in something visual. Let me show you what we can do with these. Uh, let's create a second vertex, V2 vertex. Let's give it a different position. How about negative one, one, zero. And let's give it a different color. Color equals color dot, actually let's give it the same color for now, color dot red. We'll give it the same color. And then we'll make a V3. And we'll locate that one, how about at the origin? Zero, zero, zero. And again, let's make them all red. Now again, these vertices on their own, they don't create any image. They don't populate the, the animation window. But if I use the triangle function, the triangle function takes in three vertices, right? A triangle has three corners. These are gonna be the three corners of the triangle. So you just say VS for vertices, plural. Then open up a list that's got V1, V2, and V3. Close the list, close the triangle function, and now watch what happens when we press Control 2 to run. We get a triangle. We get a triangle with three vertices, one at 1, 1, 0, one at negative 1, 1, 0, and one at 0, 0, 0. This triangle is pretty thin. It's rendered as a two-dimensional object. You can see you can get it right on its edge there and it disappears. And I can specify any three vertices as a triangle. Now the reason the color is important is because there's a color associated with each of these corners. Now all of them are the same color, which means that the triangle fills the entire shape in with red. But if I change these, let's suppose we make this one uh, green and let's make this one yellow. So now I'll have a red corner a green corner and a yellow corner. Let's see what happens. Now you can see I get a neat gradient effect. So when vPython renders this triangle, it sets this corner as red, this corner is green, this corner is yellow, and it interpolates the color in between each of those points. So for each point in the triangle here that vPython is rendering, it's rendering a linear combination of red, green, and yellow based on how close that point is to each of the three vertices. And because I'm keeping track of these vertices separate from the triangle, right? Because each of these three vertices is an object in and of itself, I can create more triangles just by creating more vertices. Let's suppose, for example, I make a fourth vertex and let's give it a position of behind one of the other points. Let's make it a half, a half, and a negative one. So we'll make it halfway between V1 and V3, and then move it back into the screen a little bit. And let's give it another color. Let's make it color dot blue. And now let's go to make a new triangle. And now I can pick any three of these vertices. So I might try, for example, V1, V3, and V4. So in other words, I'm taking the three that are on the right half of the screen. So when this pops up, I'm gonna make a new triangle of this vertex, this vertex, and a vertex back here somewhere. So when we, oops, first let's close our parentheses, and we'll press Control 2 to run. Here's our first triangle. Here is our second triangle. You can see it shares these two vertices with the first triangle, so they have a common edge but then it's got a distinct vertex over here, the blue one. And so we're getting a gradient from blue to red, blue to yellow, and it makes this neat interconnected, almost origami-like shape, uh, almost like a paper airplane kind of thing, uh, where I've got two triangles that I've joined along one edge here. And I've, I've done that automatically because I've just given 
the two triangles, these two vertices in common and these two vertices different, and it's taking care of all of the rendering, all of the joining, all the geometry for that. And so this is really neat because you can make any shape out of triangles. That's how we encode uh, shapes or meshes in 3D is we make triangles out of them. So whenever you're specifying a 3D object, like in an animation or a video game or something, you're specifying locations for the vertices of the mesh. So this is a neat way to teach students how to work with meshes. And because all you have to do is add more vertices. So we might add a V5 vertex with a position. Oh, uh, let's put this one over to the right, but down and to the back a little bit. And let's make this one color equals color dot purple. I did not close up my parentheses here. There we go. And we'll make a triangle with vertices of V1, V4, and V5. And you notice I don't have to specify anything else about this triangle. All I have to do is specify the three vertices because they take care of the positions of the corners and the colors that are going to be blended together. And here I've got my three triangles. I've got my first one, I've got my second one, I've got my third one. So I can connect any three vertices into a triangle and get whatever kind of shape I want. So I can do some origami, I can create a surface, uh, I can do whatever I would like. Now also because these vertices are separate from the triangles, right? These vertices V1 through V5, they're each their own object. They, they are stored in their own memory, they have their own variable name, their own attributes. I can modify these vertices without having to touch the triangles themselves. Let me show you what this means. Uh, let's suppose we set up a little animation loop. So let's say while true, and we'll pick a little DT of let's say a step size of 0 0.1. We'll set up a time, initialize it to zero. And let's get a frequency of Let's see, I want frequency to be, let's try one for right now. Let's try this, let's try V1. So V1 is the vertex, I'm not accessing the triangle, I don't even have to name the triangle. V1.pause equals, uh, let's see, I wanna modify this. Let's try plus equals vector cosine two times pi times the frequency times time We'll do the Y as the sign of the same thing. Copy and paste. And we'll do the, uh, let's, sit, let's do the Z component as cosine of the same thing. There we go. Uh, let's put in a rate of 10 and we'll update the time, time plus equals DT. So in other words, in each frame of the animation, I'm gonna change V1's position by a little bit. I'm gonna change it by these cosine and sine functions. And so there you go. There's, oh, wow, I need to turn down that, um, I need to turn down that amplitude. Uh, let's turn, let's set uh, something called amplitude. I always forget something, don't I? Uh, let's try 0.01. Right, waves have an amplitude and a frequency, control two. So you see now, there we go. So you see now there's my V1 point. You see it's oscillating a little bit in a, I think that should be a circle, it's just in some kind of plane. Uh, you notice it's oscillating around and the triangles are automatically adjusting. All I have to do is change this one vertex, right? I'm not changing anything about the triangles. I'm changing the vertex here. And because I've changed the vertex here, all three of these triangles have that one vertex oscillating. The other points, one, two, three, four, the other four points are all staying in the same position, but that one vertex is moving around making these triangles oscillate. So I could do that with all of the vertices, right? I could do this with V2. Let's not have it change the same way. Let's have its uh, X go like the sine, Y go like negative cosine, and Z go like sine. So now we'll have V1 and V2 oscillating. So there's V1, there's V2. Uh, my V3, V4, and V5 are staying stationary, but my V1 and V2 are changing. Um, let's see, let's get, oops, let's get a few more of these up here. Copy and paste. So I have a V3, V4, V5. 
that's a V3. Let's have it go with twice the amplitude of the others and go cosine, cosine, cosine. Let's have V4 go sine, sine, everywhere a sine. And we'll have V5 go like uh, half the amplitude times cosine, negative cosine, sine. All right, I think they've all got a different combination. It should be different enough to watch this thing oscillate around. And here you see I've got all five points oscillating around. It's, it's, it's kind of behaving like an amoeba or something. So you could use this to maybe model, uh, you know, some cellular motion or something like that. And so it's really neat, again, because all I have to do is control the vertices, the triangles automatically update because they are tied to the vertices. There's another object we can use in addition to triangles. We can also use a quad, short for quadrilateral. This uses the same syntax, so we set up vertices, but this time we're going to set up four vertices. Uh, let's just try V1, V2, V3, and V4. And just to help this make this more visible, let's remove the triangles. Now it's interesting as V1, V2, V3, and V4 are not coplanar. They don't live in the same plane, which we're about to see. So here we've set up a quad. At first it looks like a triangle, then you rotate, you realize it's put two triangles together. So this is a quad. It's got one, two, three, four points. It's just been bent in the middle there. It's able to take care of that bend there. Let's try creating uh, four vertices that are coplanar. Um, V1 through V3 are all coplanar. I just need to change V4. So let's make a V6 equal to vertex. So it equals vector. So really a, a, a vertex is a, is a vector with a color attached to it. Um, or it's a position with a color attached to it. Let's try... Uh, let's go 0 comma negative 1 comma 0 and let's make it color equals color dot white There we go, and now we'll change out v4 for v6 so Now those should all four be coplanar and there we go Now like I mentioned earlier one of the powerful things about this system is how you can create any shape that you want um, on the vPython documentation, they've got an example of a rug that they created with all sorts of different colors in it. I wanted to try creating a sphere. So I've gone ahead and made this off camera just so you don't see me fiddling around with lists and things like that. So what we're going to do, we're going to make a list of vertices because I'm going to need a lot of them. I can't just give them individual names. I'm going to create a list of them. Uh, I've set up a step size here because we're going to be working with a couple angles. So in order to create a sphere, you need two angles. You need theta to come down from the z-axis and you need a phi to go around the xy plane. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go around theta from zero to pi in increments of the step size. Then we're gonna create a temporary uh, list here. You'll see why we need that in a second. Then we're gonna go around phi going from zero to two pi in order of the step size. Uh, one of them needs to go from zero to pi, one of them needs to go from zero to two pi, otherwise you go around the sphere twice. And inside the phi loop, we're going to append to the temporary list a vertex. So we've so inside this uh, loop, we've got a particular theta value, a particular phi value. So we're at one point along the sphere. So we create a vertex with a position at that point. So this is just the position vector in spherical coordinates. Uh, if you're not familiar with that, um, I'll have a link for you in the description below. And then we're going to give each of them a different color. This is just to give them a, a blended color based on where they are in theta and phi. Um, it's just going to make it a combination of red, green, and blue. Um, and then here, after we finish the phi loop, we're going to add that temporary list to our list called vertices. So vertices is a list of lists, meaning vertices has two indices. So I is telling me where I'm at in theta. J is telling me where I'm at in phi. And so what we'll do, we're going to loop over I and J because what I need to do is connect each. I need a triangle that connects each of these vertices with their neighbors. So here, for example, I'm creating a triangle that's at vertex I, J, vertex I minus one, J minus one, and vertex I plus one, J plus one. So we're going to go down and to the left. We're going to go up and to the right. Then here we're going to go down and to the right. Here we're going to go up and to the left. 
Here we're gonna go down and to the right. Here we're gonna go up and to the right. Here we're gonna go down and to the right and then down and to the left. And I think, does that get everybody we need? Uh, well, it works visually. So I probably need to make some tweaks to this, but I've done it before and it works visually. You'll also see I'm using a different syntax for this. So instead of providing VS, you can just say V0 equals one of these, V1 equals one of these, V2 equals another of these. That's another way you can create a triangle. So let's start off with a somewhat rough step size. Let's start off with a step size of a half. We'll press control two. So again, I'm gonna have vertices all around a sphere. And you can see I get a pretty decent approximation to a sphere. It's, it's a pointy sphere because it's made of triangles. And you see I've got a few holes in here because I'm missing some combinations or my loop isn't wrapping around itself. It looks like an onion that's about to be peeled from over here. And you can see I've got points shooting from here uh, down to the beginning over here. So I have a little bit of work with this to do, but this is just to demonstrate for you uh, what you can do with this. I've got an almost sphere. Um, but what I can do if I decrease the step size, I'm gonna get more points. I'm gonna get a smaller distance between theta and phi in each of the steps. And I get a much smoother sphere. And also that gap starts to go away a little bit. So I've got the Death Star staring at me here. Uh, and I get a pretty decent approximation to a sphere. And really this is how you make a sphere is you place a bunch of points around on what would be a spherical surface. And then you connect those points with triangles. Um, if I make this a very rough sphere, 1.0, uh, this is pretty fun. I get this interesting little 3D star shape here uh, because my points are more spread out. The vertices don't have, they, they have too much angle in between them to approximate this as a sphere. So I'd like to close this video by issuing a challenge to my viewers to create an interesting shape using these vertices, triangles, and quads. Um, you know, you, you've, you've seen now where to, how to place these vertices and how to, to give them different color. Uh, this should be an interesting challenge. I'd like for you to create this in vPython and then post a link to your vPython code in the comments of this video. And uh, in a future installment, I will take a look at those uh, creations of yours and uh, we'll take a look at them and review them. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.